So in unit four, we're going to look at word problems using algebra. And this one can be quite challenging for some people because you really have to depend on your language skills and then your math skills as well. But if you take your time with it and read the question really carefully, you can start to piece together what you need to do. So I encourage you to use any variable you're comfortable with. You can use an X or an N or an A or a B, whatever makes sense to you for the thing that you don't know. And keep in mind that sometimes you'll need to use brackets as well. So hopefully we see how that works out. So if I ask you to solve, write an equation for these, um, let's read them through first. So Spencer thinks of a number, any old number, let's call it n, multiplies it by 3, and then adds, ten, adds 4. The result is equal to 10. So what would an equation look like that says that? Spencer thinks of a number, n, then multiplies it by 3, and then adds 4. The result is equal to 10. Okay, so that's n times 3 plus 4 is equal to 10. Now, I can write that a bit prettier if I want, and say that th n times 3 we often see as written as 3n, 3 times n, plus 4 is equal to 10. Now if I'm going to solve that, minus 4 from both sides, so 3n is equal to 6, divide by 3, divide by 3, n is equal to 2. So Spencer is thinking of the number 2. Another example. Spencer thinks of a number, we'll call it n, adds 4, then multiplies by 3. The result is equal to 21. Okay. So Spencer thinks of a number, adds 4, multiplies by 3, and the result is equal to 21. Now, I've written it out this way, but it's not correct. So let's think about why it's not correct. If I look at what I've written so far, what is the 3 times by? The 3 is going to times by the 4, that's going to become n plus 12. So it's not times by n plus 4, it's just times by the 4. But if you read the question, Spencer thinks of a number and adds 4. So he's thinking of a number, he adds 4 to it, and then he multiplies by 3, meaning he multiplies all of that stuff by 3. So what we really need here is brackets, and that changes the problem entirely. Spencer thinks of a number and adds 4, so n plus 4, then he multiplies by 3, so that n plus 4 needs to go into brackets, otherwise the problem is different. So what we had just a minute ago was n plus 12, if I didn't have the brackets, but with brackets, because that's the correct way to do it. If I expand this out, realizing that I can write that as 3n plus 4, if you like, is equal to 21. Expanding this problem out, we get 3n plus 12 is equal to 21. 3n plus 12 is equal to 21, not n plus 12 is equal to 21. So those brackets are very important for us. They change the problem entirely. So going ahead and trying to solve for the rest of this, let me actually shrink it down a smidge so we can solve. Okay, so 3n plus 12, I'm going to go minus 12 to both sides. 3n is equal to, um, mind blank, 9. Then my last step is going to be 3 divided by n. Sorry, 3 times n, so I need to divide by 3, divide by 3. n is equal to 9 divided by 3, which is 3. So here, the difference between these two problems was actually the order of how they did things. Same numbers, but here, the first thing Spencer does is times that number by 3, and then he adds 4. And that's okay, I don't need brackets there, because this is the thing that's getting times together, that 3 in, nothing else. But in this case, I'm multiplying a whole thing of n plus 4 times 3, because I did the plus 4 first, so I need the brackets. Another example. A number has 2 subtracted from it. Hmm. A number, n, we don't know what it is, has 2 subtracted from it. The result is the same as that number multiplied by 3. Okay. So let's see if we can make a picture out of this. 
number has 2 subtracted from it, so n minus 2. The result, so that, is the same as that number multiplied by 3. So that number is still the n, so that's n times 3. So I'm saying n minus 2 is equal to 3n. Now I need to solve this. So first thing I might do, because I've got variables on both sides, is get all the n's on one side together. So since that's a plus n over here, I might say minus n, minus n to both sides. n minus n, they cancel, so I'm left with negative 2 is equal to 3n minus n, which is 2n. And then dividing by 2, divide by 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, is equal to n. So a number has 2 subtracted from it, the result is the same as that number multiplied by 3. And we can double check that. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. We get the same thing on both sides. Similar problem. A number is subtracted from 10. So a number, if I just write what I see, a number is subtracted from 10. But that's different. That's 10 is subtracted from a number. So here the order matters with subtraction quite a bit. A number is subtracted from 10. That means this, 10, and the number is subtracted from 10. So a number is subtracted from 10. I start with 10 and take away a number. The result is the same as 2 times that number with 1 added to it. So the result is equal to 2 times that number, 2n, with 1 added to it. So again, I've got variables on both sides, so I'll think about getting the n's together. Negative n, opposite of that is plus n, plus n. So I've got 10 is equal to 2n plus n gives me 3n plus 1. Plus 1, the opposite of that is minus 1, minus 1. So 9 is equal to 3n. Divide by 3, divide by 3 on both sides, so 3 is equal to n, or n is equal to 3. Either way you want to write it is fine. So again, watch that order here. A number is subtracted from 10, that means I start with 10 and take n off of it. It's not the same as n minus 10. Spencer bakes two batches of cookies. In the second batch, he bakes four more cookies than the first batch. Altogether, he bakes 26 cookies. How many cookies are in his first batch? Well, a lot to think about here. Altogether, he bakes 26. That means I have to add up batch 1 and batch 2, and they are going to equal 26. So you could think about it as batch 1 plus batch 2 is going to equal to 26. All right, so what's batch 1? Do we know anything about it? Other than it's his first batch, no. What about batch 2? In the second batch, he bakes four more cookies than the first batch. So in the second batch, if we call the first batch n, the second batch would be n plus four, because he baked four more cookies in the first batch. So then I can come in here and say, all right, well, the first batch of cookies, I don't know how many it was, but it was n. If I add the second batch of cookies, he did the same amount, plus four more. Simplifying this, I'm going to get two n, plus 4 is equal to 26. Solving, plus 4, I want to get that to the other side, so I want to go minus 4, minus 4. 2n is equal to 22. Going to 2 times n, divide by 2, divide by 2. Those will cancel, and I'm left with n is equal to 11. And in this case, cookies. So again, Spencer bakes two batches of cookies. The second batch, he bakes four more cookies than the first batch. So the reason I'm giving n to the first batch is because I know the second batch is the first class batch plus more. So that helps me identify these two things. First batch is n, second batch is n plus four, four more. Altogether, it's 26, and solving it. Spencer thinks of a number. Let's call it x this time. He subtracts 4 from the number. Okay, so we have to think about the order of this. Is that going to be x minus 4 or 4 minus x? 
you subtract 4 from the number. So 4 is the thing that's getting subtracted. That's this one here, x minus 4. Okay, so we have x minus 4. The result is then multiplied by 3 times by 3. But that's the result of this whole thing. So we need to think about brackets because it's the whole thing x minus 4 that's times by 3. The answer to this is 9. What's the number? So I've got brackets. If you want you can rewrite this as 3, put that in front, x minus 4, times the 3 through. We get 3x minus 12 is equal to 9. And from there, I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to go plus 12, plus 12. 3x is equal to 9 plus 12, which is 21. 3 times x, opposite of that would be divide by 3, divide by 3. So x is equal to 7. So for these word problems, it does take a while to get the hang of the little subtleties, but you have to read them carefully. And then I'd recommend reading them again after you've written your equation. Does what you wrote down as your equation actually make sense or match what they're asking?